My cover story is that I have MS, so I can be sure that my scan result isn't influenced by the clinic knowing I'm healthy and a journalist. I'm scanned by the man on the right, Vic Fernando. Next to him, the man who trained him in CCSVI detection, Paolo Zamboni himself. Zamboni, remember, never found CCSVI in a healthy person. His pupil, however, just has. Well, here's the diagnosis. According to Vic Fernando, I have chronic cerebrospinal venous insufficiency, CCSVI. He didn't just diagnose me. He recommended that I have the vein widening procedure. Later, still posing as a patient, I have a consultation with one of the essential health team, a GP. She said liberation was more likely than not to help me, but there was no guarantee. She also conceded that healthy people could have so-called abnormalities in their veins too. Professor Zajcek says that admission and my diagnosis reinforce his view that liberation is a nonsense. That undermines the, the whole principle behind this. The original person that advocated this, this particular theory found that people with MS had a high degree of, uh, of evidence for blockage in the veins and people without MS didn't. And that was the whole basis on which he went, he, he's taken this forward. Subsequently, nobody else has been able to find any such relationship and there's no reason that that relationship should exist in the first place. I also showed my scan results to Ian Franklin, one of the country's leading vascular surgeons. So this was a scan on a healthy individual? At me, yes. Well, well, that's very interesting, and that reinforces the concern a lot of people have that some of these uh, anomalies may be present in the normal population, and it does, it does raise the question that it might not be specifically linked with uh, MS. Mr. Franklin doesn't do liberation, but he did have to operate on somebody who had the procedure done abroad. The patient came back with the complication that the vein had completely blocked and then underwent a couple of operations to try and unblock it and, and deal with bleeding and complications. And ten, go, six. Mr. Franklin's patient survived. Others haven't been so lucky. This is Mahir Mostik, a Canadian who had liberation at a clinic in Costa Rica. He also had small metal tubes or stents inserted to prop open his veins. These increase the risks of complications. And according to the clinic, he died after a further procedure to try and clear a blood clot. In Egypt, it's the day of Karen's operation. It's a busy clinic. MS patients come here from all over the world. Happy, like Karen, to pay 7,000 US dollars in cash. Her doctor is Tariq Sinan, a Kuwaiti who flies in once a month to do liberation. But moments before Karen's procedure, he takes me to one side. He tells me he's not licensed to practice medicine in Egypt, and operating without a license is illegal here. I decide to tell Karen but Dr. Tariq has beaten me to it. He's licensed to operate in So it's all political stuff. And, you know, it's, you know, no, I don't know. It's just the risk I've got to take. Dr. Tariq doesn't want us to film him operating. So a colleague starts off. He feeds tiny balloons up into her veins and then inflates them to correct the supposed abnormalities. He doesn't use stents. Then we're asked to leave. Karen later told me the unlicensed Dr. Tariq took over at this point. Afterwards, Karen feels different. I can feel finer things. I can feel that. I can feel that and I wouldn't... I wouldn't have been, in fact, I probably, yeah, still can't feel it on that hand, but I can feel that. I mean, it's, it's insignificant really, isn't it? But I can feel it. Wicked. This is all the proof Karen needs. 
but there is another possible explanation for her improvements. One of the complicating factors is the placebo effect, where people feel better for going through a treatment process, but not necessarily because of the treatment directly. Now, clinical trials, it's far so we carry out clinical trials because they are designed in a way to compensate for that placebo effect. But until that research is done, there effectively is no evidence to justify doing this procedure on people. Well, that, that is the case. It's an unproven treatment, and until this treatment goes through clinical trial, it's impossible to say that it works, and it's impossible to say that it's safe for people with MS. Dr. Tariq says he is doing just such a study in his home country of Kuwait. How do you know this isn't just a placebo effect? Okay, well, <laughs> this, is, this is what the neurologists say, okay? Because how, how do you know it's not true? Oh, I will tell you how. Uh, no, I don't know. I'm telling you, you're asking me. I would know when my, my study is finished because we have neurologists, independent neurologists. They are, report, they are looking into our results. So it might be placebo effect? Well, right now it might be placebo Not My personal feeling uh, uh, is not a placebo effect. But it might be. Uh, well, it's very difficult to be a placebo effect for somebody to walk better after a procedure. And what of the clinic which offers liberation back in the UK? Essential Health is based near Glasgow. They claim to have liberated around 80 people at private facilities elsewhere. They don't use stents and, in a statement, denied any suggestion of improper behaviour by anyone involved in providing the procedure. The director of this company, Dr Tom Gilhooley, declined to be interviewed on camera and the letters that I sent to Essential Health were refused and returned. So, I've come to Scotland to try and talk to him. Hello. Oh. Hello, sir. We applied to the NHS to do this and we were rejected. The only Why? way new treatments, because they said it's not proven. Because the NHS treatment. works on, but if you work on only proven treatments, there is no new treatments. Where is innovation going to come from in the world of evidence-based medicine? I am asking you a question. I'll answer it. In controlled clinical trials. That's exactly what we're doing. We are, no, you're not. We are, no, listen. You, we, are involved, no we are involved in a randomised, in the development of a randomised control trial with America and with Bulgaria. Because it. you don't do it overnight. This takes a long time and it requires funding. We probably need a lot so of why funding. Why are you already charging people when you don't know because, if it works? Because we are finding out about the prospective trial. Fair enough. You know, make your cheap programme, make your, your cheap points. You're not going to change what we're going to do. You're not going to change the determination we've got to make patients better. I see these patients. I know these patients. I value these patients. I've looked after them for years. I've seen them after the procedure. The vast majority are improved. We have something fantastic here. And you will not deflect it. Not one bit. And your behaviour and the BBC's behaviour is despicable. But critics of Dr Gil Hooley's behaviour believe the doctor's watchdog, the General Medical Council, should now intervene. Well, I think there's a case for um, reporting this to the GMC. I think I would strongly advocate people with MS or any other condition not to have any such procedures until there's at least some evidence that there, there's, that there's a benefit to it. Um, and at this stage, I think we need to publicise as widely as possible that this sort of thing is going on and um, we've got to try and stop it. It's two months since Karen's liberation. She's walking without a stick and says her hand still feels more sensitive. She's chosen not to have her improvements objectively assessed by a neurologist. If I never see the neurologist again, then that's really what I intend. I, d I don't intend to go back. It's like the whole weight has been lifted. Um, and then, and whereas I perhaps used to shed a tear, every day. I haven't cried since I had the procedure. Placebo? Bring it on. Love it. If it's placebo, I'll take it every day. Every day. We understand a complaint has now been made about Dr Gil Hooley to the GMC, although not by any contributor to this film. Like Dr Tariq, he's still offering treatment. Both of them apparently convinced that they can justify the faith and the money that patients are investing in them. Well, if you've been affected by any of the issues in that report, you can call the BBC Action Line. The number is 08000 566 065. The lines are open 24 hours a day and all calls are confidential.